What a perfect balance of edgy and handsome and determined and revengeful and mysterious. Oh, my God. <laughs> Guys, Aqua. Okay, Aqua is here. Oshinoko Aqua. And he's here. He's here. Whether you like it or not, he's here. And I want to talk about Aqua because Aqua is one of my favorite main characters. Definitely my favorite main character of this new new manga anime generation season, whatever you want to call it. Definitely my favorite. See, I'm the type of person that I don't usually gravitate towards the main characters. Main characters are usually not my favorite characters. Not because I'm like some pretentious dude that's like, oh, no, I only like the person that was in chapter five for one panel because he's actually really deep. Like, I'm not <laughs> I'm not like that or anything, but I will say that usually side characters or, you know, villains or I don't know, people that aren't the main character usually do have a little bit more depth to them and are a little bit different just because a lot of the main characters are kind of cookie cutter just so you can put yourself in their shoes you know what i mean like of course the main character is gonna save the day i like following the characters that might die next fight or something crazy might happen you know but aqua is a complete exception aqua from oshinoko the main character arguably there's no main characters you know because like they really bounce between a bunch of them arguably it's aqua and ruby but let's just call him the main character because of the doctor thing he is such a good, complex character. Off, like, the these seven anime episodes, and I'm going to get into manga spoilers later on, but I'll, I'll warn you, okay? I'll warn you. You're safe right now. Trust me. Off these seven, seven little chapters, besides the first one, that thing was a movie, six, six episodes and a movie, okay, that Aqua has been in. And he's already developed so insanely uniquely. He is a very, very, very unique character. So, okay, let, let, let's start this off. Aqua was once a doctor, okay? In, a, in another life, he was reincarnated, you know, on some isekai, but in his own world. So Aqua was reincarnated into his own world. He is now the son of the person that he admired the most in the world, right? So that's already kind of interesting. Um, so you kind of expect him to be like, go the Ruby route where you're like, oh my God, I'm such a fanboy, you know, I'm, I'm getting in there, you know, I'm hyped, I'm going to have my mom hug me, I'm going to have my mom pet me. But I feel like ever since Aqua, uh, since he's a little bit older, I believe he's like late twenties, early thirties when he died, he got reincarnated instead of like being, being a little demon, being a little like, you know, rubbing his hands together and being like, Hey, I, I need to get, you know, I need to get fed, you know, wink, wink. It, it's. It, he he took the approach of like I'm gonna protect her, which I thought was pretty interesting. You know, very admirable dude. He was very very nice in his old life. So I'm like, okay, of course he's gonna be a sweetheart in this life as well. So he's trying to take care of his of his mom. I feel like I feel like Aqua was never able to see I as his mom. He was never able to take away that like that almost pedestal like i admire you from afar type perspective even when he was her own son he couldn't like separate her he, he couldn't he couldn't comprehend that she was a real person you know even if he slowly started to learn who she really was um she never like he he said i think it was in episode seven where he said that i spent so many years with i but i feel like i never even got to know her and i feel like that's a lot to do with I and how reserved she is as, a, as an individual. You know, that was a plot point. I get it. But I think it also has a lot to do with just Aqua's character. I don't think Aqua is going to allow himself to be like, nah, let me just... This is while, while I was born, mind you. I don't think Aqua's just going to allow himself to be like, nah, this is my life. No, nah, this is my mom. Like, no, I think he's always going to be that doctor that admires her inside. So it, it's kind of like weird. Like... You know, it's like a don't meet your hero situation, but it's like, don't don't be the son of your hero. You know what I mean? <laughs> that sounds terrible. If <laughs> if your parents are your heroes, that's awesome. OK, I'm, I'm happy for you. But anyways, pretty much Aqua is this character that already like when he's born, when he's like a five year old kid, he's he's already he's already lived longer than I have. 
You know what I mean? So that reflects right away with the acting where he doesn't even need to act. He's already a mature little kid, which is creepy and interesting. And like people are just gravitated towards that type of thing anyways. And the only reason why Ruby didn't get this effect is because Ruby is very childish. I think Ruby was a 12 year old girl. So pretty much whatever um, Ruby's age is right now at 12. And also it's not like she had a very fulfilling life. Like, even when she was 12, she was basically, like, an infant still because she was locked in a room her whole life. So, it's not like she was able to experience life. But, nah, Aqua, Aqua's been there. You know, he's experienced life. He he went to school. He's a medical doctor. Clearly, he's smart. Like, clearly, he knows what's up. He has his stuff together. So, of course, Aqua is immediately going to be the more mature sibling of the of the two. And this is when... Again, I don't want to talk about the manga. I will. There's going to be a little manga section, but anime only, anime only. Shh, relax, relax. Okay. I don't think Aqua is necessarily an evil dude. Okay. So, okay. People like to say that he is the, he is the, uh, the Gen Z light Yagami. Okay. <laughs> People like to think that he's like our generation's light Yagami. He's the modern light Yagami. And, like, he uses people around him. And although there is, there is a little bit of, like, and although there is a little bit of that, like, sinisterness in his character, I feel like Aqua is honestly too nice, too sweet. He's not, like, demented to be like Yagami. And I think that's what makes him very interesting. Because he's a very sweet, tender, loving person inside. But because of what happened to I, her his mother literally died, got killed by his own father. He can't allow himself to be happy. You know, he can't allow himself to just forget about it, move on, pursue acting, you know, let his sister be an idol and everybody just be happy in, in my mom's honor, whatever. He, he can't do that. Even if he wanted to, you know, like, do you really think, okay, just think about this for a second. You are a late 20s, early 30s, semi-successful doctor you know living out out in the boonies okay like you're you're out there you're you're in there in the country his village probably had like four people i'm sure he made decent money but you know he obviously loved idol culture he obviously had that sparkle in his eye when he was staring at the tv with his little lights don't you think if the circumstances were different if he was the baby of a famous idol star that same person is in the spotlight now you're an actor that's skilled you're very handsome you have all these connections with the industry like of course of course his inner doctor is loving every second of this you know he's like dude i'm in here what's the script oh i just have to act serious i got you of course he's hyped but he can't let himself like really really fall into that and just be happy because he has stuff to take care of and I feel like that's what makes him very interesting. So I don't think he's an antagonist. I don't think he's like, yes, he can definitely be cold. He can definitely be, you know, a little edgy at times. But I don't think that's he's like that because that's who he is. I think who he is is a loving, goofy guy that had to become sinister and mysterious and light Yagami-ish, whatever you want to call it, because he has a goal. And that goal absolutely consumed him. So if you take a character like like Yagami, it was a character that, you know, he was just a regular guy and he picked up a book and he that's what made him go crazy. You know, it's not like the book killed his family. It's not like something traumatic happened to him. He was literally just a regular guy that picked up the book and said, cool. I guess I've been wanting to kill people my whole life. And, you know, I don't think Aqua's like that, you know, Aqua picking up the picking up the death note. He's just going to be like, hmm. Of course, he's going to try to kill his da dad, of course. But, you know, I don't I don't think he has it in him to just cause harm to others, although he acts very reserved. And I'm going to stop the Light Yagami comparison. It's just something I've been seeing. But, okay, just Aqua as a character. He has very a lot of complexity. He has a lot of complexity because, for example, when he saved Akane, right? When he saved Akane, when she was about to jump and he grabbed her, him saving Akane was very out of character to the people around him okay so akane herself was like hmm, that's very weird the quiet kid just saved me like you know i didn't expect that but we we as a reader we know dude this guy's a doctor of course his life preservation skill is like 
S plus. You know, that's he, he dedicated his life to saving people. So, of course, if he's going to see someone that's about to fall, of course, he's going to save them. You know what I mean? So he has these two layers. And this is why the reincarnation thing is honestly masterfully done. You know, because, of course, isekai, reincarnation, whatever. Like, that's that's a popular genre, okay? But this isn't, like, just falling into the trend or anything. Honestly, this isn't even isekai because he reincarnated into his own world. But this isn't, like, giving into a trend. Like, this is a purposefully put written plot device. And I feel like... I feel like the story, the story that they're trying to tell wouldn't really work without this like this little little twist, little reincarnation thing. So I think the way that it's done is very, very good. OK, so I'm about to end the anime talk, but let me just say one last thing. Aqua had nothing in this new life, right? Besides his mom. OK, that's all that he really cared about. He already expressed that that's the only reason why he was in this world. As soon as she died, he was like, damn, I have no purpose. I don't want to be here anymore without her, right? He had no purpose except the purpose of revenge consumed him. So although his the reason why he's possibly, I mean, I'm not going to say possibly, he definitely is depressed and sad and very reserved now is the same reason why he's even alive in the first place so that's kind of like a very crazy thing to think about like him holding on to all this rage all this emotion all this pain is what's keeping him on earth and that's how that's how if you really think about it that's how crazy he wants this revenge because he, he doesn't just want revenge for his mom's death he wants revenge for his idol's death he wants he wants revenge for the person he admires the most in both lives. In both lives, he admired this person so much. And he saw her die in his own eyes. He was, he was drenched in her blood. Just think about it. He was drenched in her blood. So, of course, all he thinks about, even when he's smiling, like in this picture right here, he's looking at the book. He's smiling. He's cool. Got the, got the thumb on the chin. He's like, oh, yeah, I'm happy. He's not happy. Okay, he's not happy. I'm going to tell you right now, if you watch the anime, if you read the manga, if it seems like Aqua is having a good time, he's not. Okay, he's not. Not until he sees this through. And that's what makes him a very, very great character. Now, there's not a lot of depth that I can go into in the anime only. So, let's talk a little bit more in the manga spoiler section. You've been warned. Three, two, one. Okay, so I'm caught up, right? chapter 119 and aqua honestly has gotten very very interesting so i want to talk about the little the little arcs the little the little string of chapters when aqua thought his dad was dead okay now this was a very very interesting little section little mini arc whatever you want to call it because this was the first time that we saw aqua finally letting go and i thought like i honestly really really thought that he was like okay i'm i'm not i'm not here anymore I, that, there's no reason for me to live i'm out of here but instead what happened and what i thought was beautiful dude made me tear up dude great great little scene little character moment is when aqua was like damn so you mean i can finally enjoy this so you mean I can finally live my life without this pain, without this weight on my shoulder? I can just let go, let loose. I can finally get close to the people that I love. I can finally pursue acting and be happy about it. I can finally refine my work and feel like it's something I'm proud of, something that I actually can earn and I don't feel like I don't deserve. And I was like, dude... This is only like what chapter 40, 50 around there. No way your dad is dead, right? So I was waiting for him to go back. And of course, he finds out that that's not the case. The dad is just the dad is in another castle. Okay. The dad just had a bunch of kids with a bunch of women. And something like for the, I don't know, like it was like 10 chapters. Aqua's character is just so different. If you haven't reread it, go back and reread it. Like his, the way his dialogue, 
he just looks livelier. You know, people always talk about the star. Oh, the star's dark when he's evil. The, the star is light when he's happy or whatever. And, you, dude, the dark star is gone. He's super. He's good. He is good. And then, boom, the dark star appears again when he finds out, no, your dad is not dead. And that, to me, was heartbreaking because I just, I can imagine all that pain coming back in waves, in floods. And not only, and not only is he upset that what he thought was true wasn't true. He's also now upset that he let himself go. You know what I mean? He's like, wow, like I didn't even double check. I didn't even make sure I was happy without even double checking you know what i mean so now he has to live with that dread because aqua's the type of person that i'm gonna use whatever tools in my arsenal necessary to reach my goal i don't care about anything else if i have to act i have to act if i have to kiss a girl which people are like oh that was super light yagami when he kissed akane and it said like i see you as a tool or whatever like when that happens, look, okay, don't take him seriously, okay? Remember, we're dealing with someone with a lot of trauma. We're dealing with someone that isn't, like, has, has a mental block, okay? So when he kissed Akane and goes, I'm going to use you as a tool. I'm like, okay, yes, that was a cool scene. That was kind of, like, crazy. I was like, damn, you know, we're really on something like Yagami. Just know that, at least in my head canon. Of course, I'm not saying that this is facts, but... In my head canon, the way that I understand his character is the mental blockade is telling him this is my tool. But deep down, he's like, I really care about her. And, you know, we do see when he puts on the duck mask and talks to Kana. And when he actually says, like, I care about Akane. Like, of course, he cares about the people in his life. And again, in different circumstances, if this was a completely different life, if I was still alive and chilling, he would probably pursue these relationships. He would probably be super happy to be around these cute girls, dude. Like, just come on now. You're telling me the doctor that had the light stick like, hey, 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 to an eye concert wouldn't be cheesed to be loved by an idol wouldn't be cheesed to be loved by an up-and-coming actress. Oh, dude, oh, he, would, he, he would be all about that. He would be all about that. Trust. So, no, I don't think he generally sees people as tools. But he has to do what he has to do. And you know what? I respect it. I respect it. So, okay, I got super sidetracked. But pretty much him finally being like, wow, so you're telling me I can live a normal life? My dad is dead. Let's go. Bittersweet. I kind of wanted to be the one to do it, but he's already dead. What can you do? He moved on. You know, he had a little pep in his step. But then, boom, your dad is still alive. And I feel like his revenge got, like, he got even hungrier. He got even hungrier. He got even more, more. I don't want to say sinister because he never really is. He got edgier, okay? He got edgier. He got a little bit deeper in that, you know, hooded, hooded aqua time black stars all around and you know there, there's this very popular theory i'm sorry this video is all over the place i really like aqua there's this popular fan theory that ruby and aqua got two different sides of their mom i so aqua got the calm collected liar side and ruby got the cheerful happy-go-lucky idol side and honestly i can see it i can definitely see it um however i do think aqua um, although he is a liar, like in the sense that he he doesn't he hides his emotions, he lies to himself. Um, I feel like Aqua is a lot more calculated than his mom. The same way that I think like Ruby is a lot more cheerful, like really like realistically cheerful. I don't think Ruby is like hiding anything. I, I honestly I think Ruby is just happy until she finds out. That, save it for the Ruby video. Save it for the Ruby video. But Ruby has some crazy character moment. Um, so yeah, I, 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 th I think that theory is good, except I feel like they are, they're like even more enhanced than I was. So honestly, I, I can see it. I, I can see that being a thing, kind of like left brain, right brain type of thing. So Aqua got like this crazy revenge plot in making a movie that I don't even know. This is like literally happened like two chapters ago. This is like the, one of the, I'm, is this the final arc? I don't know. I don't think so. I don't think so. But it's one of the, it's like one of the later arcs in the series, probably like season four of the anime. I don't even know. Um, 
we see that Aqua is going to make a movie and he's going to play his mom's killer. Now, okay, we've seen Aqua act as, um, you know, emotional act before. And just thinking about his mom makes him go crazy. Makes him go crazy. It makes him a freaking amazing actor. It makes him an incredible actor. But he does go crazy. Case in point, the play with Akane. Dude, he killed it. Okay, he, Her and him stole the show. But he, he, this is a very destructive path he's going in. You know, he's he he needs to literally break himself down every time he needs to act. And that's off a shonen manga that has nothing to do with him. Now imagine the sets, the the makeup, his sister looking just like his mom, him dressing, holding the bouquet of flowers with the knife. He has to walk up to her, knock on the door. Dude, I'm pretty sure every time Aqua hears a knock, he like he turns around and his his like his hairs go up he gets goosebumps he gets scared you're telling me he needs to calm and collectively kill his mom see that see someone act as the little kid run up to the mom and hug her he can't do it right now current aqua current power level aqua <laughs> current power level aqua can't do it okay i'm sorry but i don't think he has like he is less emotionally mature than people make him out to be. At the end of the day, like, although he was an adult, he is still very much a kid. And I don't think he can do it. I really don't. And I think that's what makes it very, very interesting. So I can't wait to see what happens. But in the end, is Aqua like Yagami? What did we learn today? No, Aqua isn't like Yagami. But I feel like he is very, very interesting. Honestly, maybe more interesting than like Yagami. I might get... I might get booted off the internet for saying that, but maybe, who knows, the series isn't over yet, so who knows, but yes, that's my Aqua video, I just wanted to say my thoughts, sorry, this video is all over the place, um, if you made it this far, thank you so much for making it this far, that's awesome, I'm gonna do, um, I think chapter 120 comes out in like five days, six days, something like that, four days, so I'm gonna make a chapter review, and I'm gonna make a chapter review every single chapter of Oshinoko that comes out for the foreseeable future, so stay tuned for that, uh, as far as other stuff that's going on in the channel, I'm, I've, I've been reading Kingdom, the manga. Uh, if you don't know what that is, no worries. Watch my last video. I'll kind of tell you what it is. It's a great, great series. Um, it's super, like, battle, historical fiction, nothing like Oshinoko. So if you're only here for Oshinoko, then I don't, you know, don't worry about it. I got you. But yeah, uh, so Ruby video coming out soon, probably after the chapter review and... Yeah, thank you for watching. I'm out of here. Bye.